Number 16 is on carbohydrates, which you learned about for the first time in the new material between exam three and the final. And so we're taking a sugar right here, which they said is D-altrose, and we're reacting it with these four arrows, and we're asked what is the major product at the end of the reaction. So let's start with reaction one. H plus was CH3OH. Whenever you have an OH group with a carbon chain on it, an H plus, when you're reacting it with a sugar, what you are going to do is you're going to look at your anomeric OH. Your car, you find your anomeric OH by looking at the carbon that has two oxygen bonds. One bond is to the oxygen in the ring, and the other bond is to the OH. And now all you're going to do is you're going to replace that OH with CH3O. Okay? So you erase the hydrogen, and since it's CH3, it'll become an OCH3. So this is what you should expect to have after the first step with H plus CH3OH. That reaction only reacts with your anomeric OH. Now notice that from the start they gave you a squiggly line for that OH. That means the oxygen was either pointing up or pointing down. And the reason why we wanted to do this is because of the next step. Well, I mean, other than the fact that they said, okay, this is what you're doing, what is the product after a result of this, but there's actually a bit of a logical reason why we have to put this OCH3 on it. And it's this reaction right here. This is the way you add a protecting group to your sugar and the orgobase protecting group that we use for the second exam. Now, there's a rule, and that rule is to add this protecting group, the two OHs, your diol, have to be pointing in the same direction off of the ring. And so right here, this must be my only option because both of these OHs are pointing down. That's the only two OHs I could protect. But if I hadn't made this an OCH3, this was an OH that was squiggly. And that means that OH is either up or down, it has both possibilities. But if this was pointing up, it's right next door to another OH that's pointing up which means this could have gotten protected as well. And so there's a secret logic behind the order of events of this problem, and it's just worth pointing out. But since we got that protected, this is the only pair of OHs that point in the same direction and are a single bond apart. So now this protecting group will come on. All you have to do is draw that protecting group underneath, erase the double bond O, erase the hydrogens of those OHs, and now connect those oxygens to the, double, to the carbon where the double bond O used to be connected. And so now you have your protecting group on. So that takes care of the second arrow. The third arrow, NaH with CH3I. First, what NaH is, is a strong base. It's a source of H minus, which will deprotonate those OHs that are left over. And it deprotonates every single OH that is available. In this case, there are two. This one over here, and this one over here. So it will deprotonate both of them, and they will both become O minus. In the second step, you have CH3I, a carbon with a good leaving group on it, which means those O minuses can then attack the carbon, pick that leaving group out, and basically you're just sticking on whatever carbon chain is attached to the iodine. You're sticking that carbon chain onto your oxygen. So at the end of this reaction, what you will get is two OCH3s, this one here, and this one here, CH3 as well. Now your final step, H3O positive. When you're dealing with sugars, H3O positive has two important purposes. The first one is the one that you've used it for on the second exam, removing the protecting group. And if you remove the protecting group with H3O positive, those oxygens that were in the ring just go back to being OHs. So now we have two OHs back over there. There's another thing that H3O positive does, and it turns the anomeric O into an OH. So if it's not an OH already, like it is here, it's, uh, I mean, if it's not an OH already, like it isn't here, it's an OCH3, H2O positive will turn this back into an OH, but it will not turn any other OCH3 into an OH, which means these two, which reacted with the CH3I, are stuck that way forever, and these two are still OHs because they were protected when we did that reaction. So this right here, where we have squiggly line OH, up OCH3, two down OHs, and then a CH2 OCH3 will be your answer. And if we look at the answer key, that was option A. So the answer to number 16 was choice A.